Hallelujah. There we are. <laughs> Praise be to God. How's everybody tonight? Blessed and highly flavored. What a day and time we are in, let me tell you. It's called end time. Everyone say end time. That means time's coming to an end. Woohoo. Thank you, Jesus. I can't wait, but I have to. <laughs> you know, the word says something powerful. It says, bad company corrupts good habits. Amen. Bad company. What is bad company? It's, it used to be a song, bad company. Amen. <laughs> For those that you are <laughs> not teenagers anymore. <laughs> Bad company. You know, in the arena of bad company, it's associated with wickedness. It's associated with evil. It's associated with antichrist. It's associated with rebellious. It's associated with hard-hearted people. It's associated with hypocrites. It's associated with what we call pretenders. Pretenders. Bad company corrupts good habits. So in other words, the Lord is saying, listen, don't associate with bad company. Amen. Now, bad company is just not an individual person. Bad company is associated with movies, books, entertainment, certain things. Bad company, music, all of these things can provoke and depart in you an area where your good habits become bad habits. Has everybody got it? Why? Because what it does is you remember something that we are not fighting flesh and blood, but powers of darkness, wickedness, and heaven. We are fighting an unseen realm. And the word says something very important. You will know them by their fruit. Everyone to your neighbors say you're a fruit inspector. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're not a granola inspector. You're a fruit inspector. You can tell the granolas right off the bat. They got that butterfly motion. With no power. <laughs> so in this, we will know them by their fruit. So we're to inspect fruit. What are we trying to find? Bad company. Well, it's bad company doesn't mean the person is bad. It means their presence that they're associated with is bad. It's evil. Remember, people are normally good. God did not create us in an evil intent. He created us in love. But the problem is, is the environment begins to influence people. People we associate begin to influence people. You find that people who leave the church usually go hang around with those who've left the church. Because bad company keeps feeding bad habits. <laughs> You'll find that the, the one of the two major fruits of an individual is grumbling and complaining. Hello? That, that, that's, that's the biggie. And the ones that can't say what they do or do what they say. So in this, you, you see that out of the mouth can either defile a person or expose the, and expose the person or give approval of that person. See, you should be approving everyone you hang with. That's your responsibility. You're to approve them. That doesn't mean that you've got to prove yourself. If you're walking in the Spirit, you're just going to walk in peace, joy, and righteousness, and love. You're not, look at what are the greatest ways to find out where someone's at? Look on Facebook. It's called Fleshbook. It's the only place that they can promote themselves in the soulish realm with no one criticizing. Because they don't have an audience in front of them that can say, get behind me, devil. Fleshbook. It is the soulish opinion media. Everybody okay? Yeah. End time pretenders. 
2 Peter chapter 2. All glory. And verse 2, I mean verse 1. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 1. End time pretenders. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. But there were also false prophets among the people. How, long, how many of you all know that a false prophet is a pretender? You know, there's a lot of public defenders we call public pretenders. Amen? Amen. They say, they look like, oh yeah, I'm all for you, and they don't do a stinking thing. They'd rather work a deal out instead of fight for you. But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be, will be, everyone say will be. False teachers, in other words, there'll be pretenders among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them and bring on themselves swift destruction. Let me tell you, swift destruction with God could take a long time. You never know when it's going to happen. You never know what's going to ha how it's going to happen. It is called suddenly. The problem is you don't know when that suddenly is going to happen, but it will. And many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, their judgment has not, has not been idle, and their destruction does not slumber. In other words, it's coming. Because whatever you sow, you will reap. But if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment, and did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of ungodliness, and turning the cities of Sodom and, and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly. What an example. You know, one of the things people don't, they, they don't, they don't really believe that the word of God is true. Or they don't even know it. And deliver righteous Lot who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. That's what's going on right now. You are seeing and hearing so much lawlessness. So much deception. So much bitterness. So much unforgiveness. So much grumbling and complaining and criticizing and accusing. So much false news. I mean, there is so much stuff going on. And that's all it's doing is producing hatred and division and strife. He said, then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. I want you to know that he has a way of escape for the godly. Hello. The ones that are not right do not escape. They fall into the trap of the enemy. And especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of, the, of uncleanness and despise authority. Oh, they think they can just speak against anyone and get away with it. One of the things the Lord says, touch not my anointed. You better be careful. They are presumptuous self-willed. And are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries. Whereas angels who are greater in power and might do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord. But these like natural brute beasts made to be caught, destroyed, and destroyed speak evil of things they do not understand. This is so powerful. Oh, they, th they have a form of godliness and a form of understanding, but they don't get it. Because if they got it, there would be an area of fear of God. And will utterly perish in their own corruption and will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime. Hmm. 
Hallelujah. They are spots and blemishes carousing in their own deception while they feast with you, while they eat with you, while they fellowship with you. Having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin. Enticing unstable souls. They have a hard training, covetous practices. Selfie. And are accursed children. Ooh. And are what? Accursed children. Individuals who walk in that state of being are cursed. And they don't even know it. They have forgotten the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bar, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but he was rebuked by his iniquity. A dumb donkey speaking with a man's voice restrained the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds carried by the tempest, for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them freedom, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome by him, also he is brought into bondage. You know anyone who's always in bondage? Here he is. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The latter end is worse for them than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them according to the true proverb, a dog, which means demon-influenced, demon-possessed individual, returns to his own vomit, and a soul having washed to their uh, wilding in the mire. All end-time pretenders. This is what this is about. Where you and I must be careful because the influence is phenomenal. Phenomenal. Some of us who become born again, we've had, we used to have really good friends. Let me tell you, people that are not unplugged from the world are not your friends. They will turn on you. Although the problem is we got so many in the body of Christ that will turn on you too. Because they're really not unplugged from the world yet. They have one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom. And the word says you can't serve two. You can only serve one. So that means if you're trying to serve two, the enemy will overtake you every time. Every time. You cannot serve two gods. It's impossible. All end time pretenders. Amen. Second Timothy chapter three. Is everybody there? Amen. Well, we've heard this scripture multiple times. <laughs> but know this that in the last days, are we in the last days yet? Amen. Yes. Perilous times will come. Struggles will come. Trials will come. Challenges will come. Testing will come. Bad company will influence and multiply. For men will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of money, boasters. Proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control. Brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They have a form of godliness. In other words, they can praise, they can worship, they can even speak in tongues. Hmm. But they deny the power of God because they don't trust God. And it says, and from such people turn away, turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and ministries and businesses and make captives of men and women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts. Why? Because they're always trying to influence to believe in their false belief system. Always learning. Man, they can take notes. They can do it all. They're learning, 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 and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. In other words, they can never be free 
because they're still serving themselves and trying to serve God, and you can't. Now, as Janus and Jabiris resisted Moses, so these also resist the truth. They resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith. These are selfie generation, false entitlements, corrupt minds. They resist the truth. They resist counsel. They resist correction. They, they are disapproved because of the lack of faith in relationship with Christ Jesus. Why? Because where there's a relationship, there's fear of God. Without the fear of the Lord, there is no relationship. For they will progress no further. Hmm. In other words, they cannot grow. For their folly will be manifested to all as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, and perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me in Antioch, at Icaeum and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and out of them the Lord delivered me. Why did the Lord deliver him? Because he was in right standing with God. He wasn't a pretender. People wonder why God hasn't delivered them, because they're not in right standing. They're still touching things that are unclean. Or they're still part of the world. They're still associating with individuals that God calls bad company. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will what? Suffer persecution. Now look at 13. But evil men and imposters. Imposters is the same thing as pretenders. Evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse deceiving and being deceived. In other words, the enemy is going to deceive them and they're going to deceive others. They're going to draw people right into their presence where the presence of evil is, proclaim to be a Christian, but yet cause and plant corruptible seeds to bring division and strife. Has everybody got it? Again, it's a selfie generation. Self-entitlements, corrupt minds, resist truth, counsel, correction. They are disapproved because of the lack of faith in relationship with the Lord. These are called end-time pretenders. They run to the phone and not the throne. They always run to the phone. They want to talk to somebody instead of talk to God first. End-time pretenders because of lack of relationship. They don't want to expose everybody else's garbage when they're practicing the same thing. Hello? Amen. They live out of the soul and not of the spirit. They willfully reject the rule of authority as children of wrath and cannot grow but live in an immature state of being with no progress in sight, allowing themselves to be manifested by complaining, compromising, and betrayal because self and money is first just like Judas. Just like who? Judas. Judas. These are called end time pretenders, imposters. Really not willing to learn. In 1 Corinthians 13. One of the things they carry is what we call false love. They say they love you, but they really don't. It's false love. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. First Corinthians 13 and verse 11. End time pretenders. For when I was a what? Child, I spoke as a child. I understand as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in the mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is what? Love. End time pretenders. Childish thinking. Childish speaking, childish acting. The fight for self. 
is a constant fight for self, is a constant fight for self-will, is a constant fight for self-desire, and is a constant fight for self-approval. Hello? And the final thing is a self-opinion. Oh, they got an opinion of everything. They are currently minded, dangerous, and untrusting. They are actually haters and not lovers. And Matthew 15. Glory, end time pretenders. You know, you can see this all over the world. It's all over. And it's getting worse. In verse 7. A hypocrite is an end time pretender. Has everybody got it? It's a pretender, man, no matter what. Hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, these people draw near me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me teaching his doctrines the commandments of men. When he had called the multitude to himself, he said to them, hear and understand, not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles the man. So a grumbler and a complainer is a defiled person. Then his disciples came and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying, believe me, a pretender's always offended. But he answered and said, every plant which my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into the ditch. It's just a matter of time. Then Peter answered and said to him, explain this parable to us. So Jesus said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart. They defile a man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unclean hands does not defile a man. A man. <laughs> End time pretenders. They defile themselves by their mouth and their deeds. They are called hypocrites. They're all over. Turn on the TV. Look at some of your neighbors. <laughs> you know, they're all over. Romans 2. Look at your workplace. <laughs> Go to some of your churches. <laughs> Romans 2. It's just for you. Let's go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 1. Therefore you are what? Inexcusable, O man, whoever you are who judge. For whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge, practice the same things. Grumbling and complaining about someone else when you're doing the same stinking stuff. But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O oh man, who you judge, those practicing such things and do the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? Heck no. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? See, they, they use the arena of justification and excuses, not repentance. They won't dare think that they did something incorrect or wrong. You know, there's a reason why God talks about the right and the left. Amen? Amen. He talks about the right that will enter into his kingdom and the left are rebellious. So if you're not right, you got to be wrong. Amen? Amen? It's all to it. For all those leftists out there. 
If you're not right, you're wrong, man. That's all it's done. That's the sorry. And the left is associated with a Luciferian agenda. So our pretenders under a Luciferian agenda, whether they know it or not, they are servants of Satan, whether they know it or not. They proclaim to be Christians, but they are servants of Satan, not really knowing it, not willing to judge their fruit, not willing to go to the throne, not willing to do self-examination. But in accordance with your hardness and your impotent, impenitent heart, you are what? Trespassing up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Why? Because they are not quick to repent. Who will render to each one according to his deeds eternal life to those who by patient endurance, continuance in doing good, seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish, and on every soul of a man who does evil of the Jew first and also the Greek. But glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for there is no partiality with God. See, people are out there trying to expose others when their cells is out of order. Amen. They are exaggerating liars to make self look good, but actually are carrying an evil heart, self-seeking, end-time pretenders. They are sheep clothing, but they're actually wolves of hearts. They feed on demonic influence, calling themselves Christians or righteous, uh, or, or righteous ones who, who fight the cause, but their cause is not truly the cause. They're fighting for their own cause. But they can only last so long until they are manifested. Because evil, evil always has to do something evil. It cannot hold righteousness. It must manifest. Is everybody okay? Jude 12. Jude verse 12. That's why we're seeing a lot of manifestations out there. That's why we're seeing a lot of manifestations in the body of Christ. God is exposing all kinds of things, everything. Preachers, evangelists, all kinds of stuff. People that you even know in congregations and stuff, things that they're doing that you know ain't right. Still living in fornication, making excuses why they need to, not willing to depart from evil, but willing to expose everyone else. In verse 12, are you there? Let's speak it. These are spots in your love feast. While they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves, they are clouds without water, carried about by the winds, late autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, pulled up by the roots, raging waves of sea, foaming up their own shame, wandering stars, from whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Now Enoch in the seventh, the seventh from Adam prophesied about these men, also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them all of their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. They are grumblers. They are complainers, walking according to their own lusts. They mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How they told you that there would be mockers in the last time. These are called pretenders. Who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the spirit. In other words, there is not fellowship. They are not in the spirit. Oh, they may speak in tongues, but speaking in tongues doesn't say you're walking in the spirit. It's a gift. It's not a fruit. It's a gift. I want to say this again. Speaking in tongues is not a fruit. It is a gift. 
So if somebody, believe me, I've seen many people speak in tongues and still go home and beat their wives and all kinds of stupid stuff. It is a gift, not a fruit. Amen? Amen. You'll know the fruits that come out of their mouth and how they react. Because they are reactors. They're not responders. They're grumblers, complainers, and reactors. Ready to explode at any time. Seeing themselves, serving themselves, grumblers, complainers, not having the position in the spirit. They cause problems. They're called end time pretenders, not willing to take responsibility. But live a blame, whoo, they live a blame game life. It's a blame game life of deception and false impressions to others. Blame game. They always blame everybody else. 1 Corinthians 3. This is reality. This is where we're at all over the world. Don't approve of it. Don't approve of it. Do not approve of it because if you approve of it, it'll be judged the same way. First Corinthians three and verse one. And brethren, I and I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you are not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able, for you are still carnal. In other words, you didn't progress, you didn't grow, you didn't come out of that situation. You're still approving those things you're not supposed to approve of. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like men? For one says, I am Paul. Another, I am Apollos. And are you not carnal? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos but ministers through whom you believed as the Lord gave to each one? Now this is powerful. Carnal. Mortal pretenders is what this is. They lacking Christ's integrity and character. Not able or willing to accept their new identity. They're not able to accept their new identity. But fighting for their carnal identity. Trying to be someone they're not. Not recognizing the ruling voice of deception that rules them. And losing the voice of God. They lose the voice of God. It sears their conscience. And they do nothing but soulish decisions. Because they have to make a decision how they feel. Because they have no voice of God anymore. Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrew 3. I didn't brew tonight. I'd be dancing on the pulpit. <laughs> I drank though. <laughs> Hebrew 3. In verse 7. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today if you will hear his voice, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. Listen, very important. A person that does not hear the voice of God, his heart is always hardened. The only way that heart can become soft is it must be broke to hear the voice of God. A person that cannot hear God's voice walks around with a hardened heart. Do not harden your heart as in the rebellion in the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works 40 years. Therefore I was angry with that generation and said they always go astray in their what? Heart, because it's hard. They can't hear God's voice. They have not known my ways. They won't know his ways either because they won't hear his voice. They'll even read the word and still not know his ways. 
because there's not true interpretation. So I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened to the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is say, said, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Wow. Again, a hardened heart is carried by everyone who does not hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Whether it be in counsel, correction, direction, or decision and choices. Unable to be truly repentant. Again, you can see this all over the world. You can see it in the news media, your neighbors, your workplace, even in the body of Christ. Individuals not willing to become broken. They're not willing to become broken. Fighting for their lives. Wow. They have to be broke by the Holy Spirit, which is the process of perfection. Without a broken heart. It's just like an alabaster box. The box is hard. But when it is broken, the oil comes out. And that's how it is with the anointing. The anointing doesn't come until there's brokenness. Psalm 34. Glory. Verse 15, 34, 15. Woo. Right, wait, hold on a second. 11. Let's go to verse 11. <laughs> Come, you children, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Yes. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue wrapped in a bow. It'd be better if it looked like a bow tie than anything else. Keep your tongue from what? Evil is grumbling and complaining evil. Yes. What you're trying to tell God is you know it better than him. And your lips from speaking deceit, exaggeration, and lies. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all of their trouble. Why? Because they're in right standing with God. The Lord is near to those who have a what? Broken heart. He's near to them. But man, once that heart gets hardened, whoop, he moves away. And saves such as as a what? Contrite heart. That is repentant heart. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of all of them. Why? Because they have a, they're right standing with God. They have a broken heart. They're open, and they're quick to repent. Amen? Psalm 51. Psalm 51. In verse 10, this was a cry, a prayer. He said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit in me. And do not cast me away from your presence nor take your Holy Spirit from me. This, he knew. He knew that a hardened heart would shut the voice of God off and remove his presence. He knew. I'm telling you, there are believers today who say they are believers who have lost the presence of God for years. Years. And don't even know it. They're still listening to the voice of the soul, not the voice of the Holy Spirit. Verse 12. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. Deliver me 
from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you did not desire a sacrifice, or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are what? A broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. Oh, hallelujah. Sacrifices. <laughs> broken spirit, contrite heart. Okay, so we see here that he will not despise you. It doesn't matter what you've done. David made many mistakes. But he was a man after God's heart. You know why? He humbled himself. He humbled himself. Man, he would sit in front of the ark of the covenant. He, wanted, he loved God's presence. He would hear God's voice. He used to rebuke the prophets who tried to speak to him because he would hear God's voice. Except for when his heart became hardened, he lost the voice of God. And the Lord had to send the prophets to speak to him and speak to him in parables. And judgment was brought. Oh, glory. Isaiah 57. Isaiah 57. In verse 14. Uh, let's start at verse 11. In verse 11. And whom have you been afraid of or feared that you have lied and not remembered me, nor taken it to your heart, is it not because I have held my peace from old that you do not fear me? I will declare your righteousness in your works, for they will not profit you. When you cry out, let your collections of idols deliver you. But the wind will carry them all away. A breath will take them. But he who puts his trust in me shall possess the land and shall inherit my holy mountain. And one shall say, heap it up, heap it up. Prepare the way. Take the stumbling block out of the way of my people. For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him who has a contrite and humble spirit. That is a place of connection. That's called blessed every spiritual blessing and seated in heavenly places. He's saying he who has a humble spirit has a contrite spirit and a humble spirit. It will revive the spirit of humility to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Wow. Again, he's saying, listen, those who have a broken spirit, have a broken heart and a contrite spirit who are humble, you will dwell with me. You will be seated with... See, many people know the promises of God and the scriptures that were blessed every spiritual blessing and seated in heavenly places, but have no reality to it because the heart is still hardened. Again, without hearing the voice of God, your heart will stay hardened. It is vital to come to a place of brokenness. It doesn't mean that you walk around mourning all day. Oh, it's got nothing to do with it. It's an area where you realize you cannot rely on yourself. You cannot live without him. And you don't want to offend him. You don't want to grieve him. The Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. Dwell on high. That's through revelation connection. Everyone say revelation connection. Yes. In other words, the connection of revelation is constant. It's constant. It stays. Because those who do not have revelation, the restraints fall off. That means they can no longer restrain their flesh. Their heart becomes hardened and they don't hear the voice of God. Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66. 
end time pretenders. We don't want to fall in that category. Verse 1 and 2. Thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build me? And where is the place of my rest? You know, we're to be the house. Amen? Amen. We're to be building his house. For all those things my hand has made, and all those things exist, says the Lord, but on this one will I look. On this one will I look. On him who is poor and of a contrite spirit and who trembles at my word. On this one I will look. Ooh. One of the things, he's going to look at you. Listen. All of our weaknesses must be sifted. All of our weaknesses are sifted a shaft before him. Wherever you and I are weak, they are sifted. Because the Lord says when we are weak, we become strong. But there are areas where we are weak and resisting evil. We are weak in those areas because of the lack of infilling and eating of God's word, drinking of his spirit, and in lack of true fellowship. Let me tell you, you can be in fellowship 24 hours a day but what comes out of your mouth will separate it. Always separate it. And Revelation 3. Revelation chapter 3, verse 17. I want you to know that end time pretenders are lukewarm. They are lukewarm. They're not hot. They're lukewarm. And most of them are cold, but if you're cold, you're not a believer anyways. But they're lukewarm. The, the order, the divine order is not there. Everything is in reverse to them. The divine order is in reverse to them. God is last, they're first. Everything else, their job, their relationships, all the other stuff is first before God. And they maintain a lukewarm lifestyle. Those are always used by pretenders. That is one of the fruits of a pretender. Is everybody okay? Verse 16 says, So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Verse 17, because you say I'm rich, I have become wealthy and have need of nothing. And do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Well, there's a fruit for you. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in fire that you may be rich and white garments and that you may be clothed and that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and do what? And repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, hears my voice, and hears my voice, and opens the door. So if you can't hear his voice, you can't open the door. I will come into him and dine with him, and he with me. To him who overcomes, again, to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. These are golden opportunities. He said, buy for me refined gold. Amen. That's called a golden opportunity to step into fire and remove all false reality of self and identity so that everything is restored. True reality is restored. True identity is restored. I'm going to close at 1 John, chapter 3. First John, chapter 3. 
Is everybody cool? Amen. Are you getting this? Amen. We'll be able to see better. In verse 7, let's speak it. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him. He cannot sin because he has been born of God. And this is children of God, and the children of the devil are what? manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. It's real simple. You'll know someone who's practiced good and evil or somebody who's practicing righteousness. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain who was of the wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers righteous. Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. By this we know love because he laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from, from him, how does the love of God abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and what? In truth. End time pretenders, be careful. They're everywhere. You'll know them by their fruitiness. Lack of true fruit. Amen? Bad company corrupts good habits. Flesh book, Tweety, Weedy, and all the other stuff. <laughs> Don't get sucked into technology and have it take dominion over you. You should have dominion over it. Amen? If you don't, you become a pretender. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you protect the seed that's been imparted in us, covering it and applying the blood of Jesus on it so that it grows and bears fruits into every part of our being so that your character and your integrity would take possession of every person in this room, that you would give us the eyes to see the fruits of ourself first, then we see the fruits of others so we do not associate with the presence of evil. And we give you all the glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And everybody said amen. amen.